Playtime is now over, and a far more profound two-minute period of your life has just begun. The crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is showing the highest levels of radioactive cesium recorded so far in the groundwater on the coastal side. Last week's heavy rainfall may be the cause. Officials say water taken from a well contained 190,000 becquerels of cesium-137 and 61,000 becquerels of cesium-134 per liter. The well for observing groundwater is located on the coastal side of the number two reactor building. Highly contaminated water that flowed into an underground tunnel in the 2011 accident seeped into soil in the area. Officials say the heavy rainfall from a typhoon last week likely caused radioactive substances in the soil to flow into the groundwater. The officials plan to increase the frequency of water sample tests to monitor the effects of the heavy rainfall. They say it will be difficult to take drastic steps because they don't know how far contaminated water seeped into the ground after the accident. Japan's nuclear regulator says it has decided not to use an emergency system known as Speedy to predict the spread of nuclear fallout. The regulator has deemed the system unreliable. Speedy is supposed to predict how radioactive substances will spread from a damaged plant based on weather and topographic data. It covers Japan's nuclear power stations and other facilities, but most of the system's predictions during the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster were not released for nearly two months after the accident. Officials of the Nuclear Regulation Authority said at a meeting on Wednesday that the use of inaccurate predictions could increase the risk of local residents being exposed to radiation. They decided they will not use the data to draw up evacuation policy. Experts who investigated the Fukushima accident disagree on whether the data is accurate enough to be used for making decisions on evacuation. Which is counterintuitive to the point of madness. And then the next commercial is this buzz for you. Come on, everybody, let's be hypocritical bastards. A government panel investigating the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident will issue its final report next week. It will say residents could have avoided unnecessary exposure to radiation if the government's speedy system for predicting the spread of radioactive substances had been used to plan their evacuations. But the speedy results were not publicized by government officials. That's because they presumed the system was activated using meteorological predictions on how radiation would spread. The panel is studying the science ministry's speedy results and the evacuations of residents. It plans to issue its final report on July 23rd. The report will say Speedy predicted in the noon of March 15th last year that radioactive elements would spread inland toward the west and northwest. Residents were fleeing in those directions on that day. In fact, high levels of radiation, sometimes reaching 330 microsieverts per hour, were detected 20 kilometers northwest of the nuclear power plant. Speedy was forecast or also forecast that from the dawn of March 16th, a change in wind directions would send radioactive substances out over the Pacific Ocean. The report will also say people could have avoided unnecessary exposure to radiation if the government had used speedy predictions in planning evacuations and if residents had been ordered to stay inside on March 15th and seek refuge on the following day. <laughs> We could have evacuated in another direction if the forecast data of Speedy had been disclosed in advance, as there was a high level of radiation where we fled. Earlier this month, another panel of experts commissioned by the Diet issued its report, which included a different conclusion on Speedy from that of the government committee. It said, Speedy forecasts cannot be used as a basis to craft initial evacuation plans due to the limited accuracy of weather information to be used in predictions. So all I'm saying is if anybody thinks that they're not going to screw you, well, good for you. The Japanese government is doing more to help municipalities prepare for the possibility of nuclear power plant accidents. The cabinet office has established a section dedicated to the task full time. The division brings together 50 people from the Nuclear Regulation Authority and other agencies. 
In the past, the Cabinet Office has advised local governments on disaster preparedness. But the system did not assign full-time workers to disaster risk management, raising criticism that it was insufficient. I would like the members to work closely with local governments on evacuation procedures while remembering lessons from the Fukushima nuclear accident. Attention has been focused on communities around the Sendai nuclear power plant in southwestern Japan. Two reactors at the facilities were the first to meet stricter requirements established after the accident at the Fukushima Daiji plant in 2011. But the consent of host communities is also needed before operations can be restarted. With all 48 reactors in Japan currently offline, the new section will be working with local governments around the country to improve preparedness measures. Hello, I'm Naohiro Masuda, DEFCO's Chief Decommissioning Officer. Here at Fukushima Daiichi, we are making progress in our work to safely decontaminate and eventually decommission this facility. I'd like to briefly show you some of the things we are doing. This is Akira Ono, the facility manager at Fukushima Daiichi. Hello Ono-san, thank you for joining us. You can see the very large, innovative cantilevered structure at Unit 4 that was built to stabilize the building and allow us to safely remove fuel assemblies from the spent fuel pool. Moving the fuels out of the damaged reactor building and into safe storage lays the groundwork for moving forward with cleanup and remediation of the damaged building. Our people have worked so hard for several years on this procedure so that it could be performed safely at Unit 1 through 4. It is just one of the many things we are doing here at Fukushima Daiichi. Some tasks involve preparing for eventually removing the nuclear debris from Unit 1 through 3, a process that will take years. We installed a protective cover for the damaged reactor building of Unit 1 in October 2011, and from here on, the cover will be demolished to remove the rubble as the first step toward removing the nuclear debris. We'll develop this process together with preventing any further release of radioactive material and also maintaining the safety of the workers. Other tasks involve the management of water to reduce the contaminated water and protect the environment. To reduce the amount of contaminated water, the advanced liquid processing system, so-called ALPS, is in operation. This can remove 62 nuclides from the water after initial processing. The system is expected to be fully operational by the end of 2014. Major expansion to the system are also planned and their activation is expected to treat all the water stored at Fukushima Daiichi till it reaches a much safer level by the end of fiscal year 2014. As another example of water treatment, a frozen soil barrier is under construction along the perimeter of units 1 through 4. It is designed to prevent groundwater from entering those buildings and thereby being contaminated. The technology has already been proven in tunnel construction, though this will be the first time it has been employed on so large a scale or for so long a time. Freezing of the soil is expected to begin in March 2015. I'm very proud of the hard work all the people at Fukushima Daiichi are doing. We are striving every day to improve work conditions and make their work easier. We at TEPCO are also grateful for the participation of our partners, including Hitachi, Toshiba, and Mitsubishi, as well as our international partners such as Serafield and the U.S. Department of Energy. I want to express my personal commitment and the commitment of everyone at TEPCO to diligently continue the work ahead safely and with focus and accountability to its completion. And now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Dale Klein, former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission and Chairman of TEPCO's International Nuclear Reform Monitoring Committee. 
It's very important to realize that while their challenges still remain, good progress has occurred. Safety culture is an area where you never finish. You always strive for excellence, and TEPCO is striving for excellence, and they are making improvement. I look forward to continuing to work with TEPCO as they move forward with their nuclear reform activities, and it's my pleasure to continue to help the Japanese people and TEPCO specifically as they move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Klein. Building a strong safety culture is a very high priority for us. We appreciate the assistance that you, Lady Judge, and so many others are providing. We hope you will follow our progress on our website. There, we will continue to demonstrate how this collaboration and our own spirit of innovation and determination will help to achieve our goals here at Kushima and make a positive contribution to the global nuclear industry. Thank you.